Next on our program, we're going to have a spoken word by Pastor Everett Robinson, AKA the ambassador. He is pastor and founder of the Will of God Christian Center in Vallejo. The ambassador is busy ministering to young black men and those in transitional housing, teaching and aiding them to maintain, which is very important for all of us in life, survival skills. At this time, please welcome Pastor Robinson. Acknowledge to God, acknowledging Reverend Williams and Sister Judith and all those who have participated, I want to take a brief moment to just share a little word with you out of Psalms 1 and 12. 112. But I also want to thank God for uh, Brother Daniel, very articulate, very eloquent, communicated very well. You brought the message for the day, my brother. God bless you. yourself well, the level of maturity, the sincerity from the heart. I highly commend you, brother. My hat's off to you, and I respect you as an honorable young man. Uh, the foundational text that we'll be reading out of the Psalm 112, I'm going to read verse 1, and then go to verse 7. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Back to verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. We live in a time where constantly getting, getting evil news. Every time you turn on the news, you're getting bad news. Talking to friends on cell phones and telephones, you're getting evil news. And so notice that he says, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I think the first place that we need to start at is our own heart. Yeah. Where is your heart? Are you walking in the fear of God? We're talking about the same God that Martin Luther King worshipped, the one who he proclaimed. His heart was fixed upon the Lord and God's commandments. His heart was fixed upon the very vision that God gave him. And when God gave him a vision, it was such a passion of his spirit that he wanted equality for all men, for all walks of life. Yeah. And he was so focused, he did not give up and he did not quit. You see, when you have a vision, see, and a vision is a spiritual and mental picture of what you want to achieve, where you want to be, go, or what you want to be. Whatever your vision may be, God will give you the provision to bring the vision yeah. to pass. Yeah. Whenever you have a vision for God, listen, you have to know what the vision is, and then they hold the vision so that you will not give up and you will not quit. Come with will on the inside of my spirit. I make a quality decision that I will conquer. I will overcome. I will triumph and keep on moving till my vision come to pass. Yes, there will be, there will be hardships. There will be opposition. But don't let the mountain take you. You take the mountain. Right. And let me call something in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Uh, in chapter 20, where Paul was going through so much opposition as he was carrying out the task and the mission and the vision that God gave him, he said this, none of these things move me. Though I have bonds and affliction, though I have opposition, though I have adversary, though I have people who have betrayed me and turned their backs on me, I have false brethren. He said, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. You can have opposition, but you can't allow the opposition. You can't allow the adversity. You can't allow the pain. You can't allow when dogs are sitting on you, when your whole town, you got so much ill will treatment and injustice going, you can't allow that to stop you. 
And thank God, Martin Luther King Jr. and those that support him and work with him kept fighting for equality. And right now, had it not been for them making a stand and being steadfast, we probably wouldn't be sitting in the cabin all like this today. We probably wouldn't be using the same restaurant. We want the same restaurants. Thank God we had a man and a company of other men and women that worked with him. Thank God there was people even of the Caucasian persuasion that worked with him and stood with him. We can get along. We can work together. But listen, your heart must be fixed. Your heart must be fixed and set on the Lord. Now, I was working in Napa one time, and I was the only African-American man in that particular department, and I was the supervisor in that department. And so I believe in being fruitful and healthy. That is, developing fruitful and healthy relationships with all people from all walks of life. And so the same that I have at my job was when I greet all the employees and, and those who come into the business, bless you and peace be upon you, sir. Oh, I say bless you and peace be upon you. And so what I found out was the different people in my department, I found out that like, whatever food they like, I would go and buy it and bring it to them and just serve them. Okay. I wanted them to be happy about coming to work. See, I mean, if you have work almost more often than you're at home, it's a home. Be a blessing. Just because somebody don't like you, the way you have to get out of your back with them. Your heart got to be fixed. And so here I'm, I'm at the gym, back up a little bit. I'm at the gym and I'm working out. And here's this, this, this other man. He's looking at me like he's mean mugging me. I found out, you know, he was out of prison or whatever. And so now, you know, he mean mugging me, right? <laughs> I'm a man of peace. I'm going to bless you, man. So, he me bugging me. I don't know him. And every time he give me a funny look, I say, how you doing, my brother? Bless you. Oh. <laughs> how you doing, my brother? Bless you. Peace be upon you. See him another day working out? He won't speak. He won't say nothing to me. It's had attitude. Now, mind you, I'm a black belt under the champion. I fought black belt for so now, I was trained in Taekwondo, Chinese Kimbo, Chinese Kickboxing, and Kata Kimbo, and a boxer. I was well trained, trained three times a day, every day. And I fought so many different black belts of all various different degrees. I didn't care how big it was, how bad, how tough it was, I will fight you and I'll find a way. I'll figure out I'm a genius. I'll figure out I'm going to beat you fast and quick. I'll beat you fast and quick and quick and quick and quick and fast. But it, it doesn't make a difference of, of, of what I know. It's not how, what is going to profit me to get into a scuffle with him in a gym? What is that going to accomplish? Nothing. So I say, it's a spiritual warfare. See, what happens is we don't get fixed up on and understand we are in a spiritual warfare. How can I win this man over that a peace with me? How can I, whatever mental block he got in relationship to me, I have no problem with him. I never had no problem with him. I didn't even know him. So I would say, the light of heaven shall be in my blood. See him again. Bless you, man. Have a, amen. Have a great day, and may God's blessing be upon you. Yeah. Did you not know one day he called me and said, he called me over and said, come here, man, I want to show you something. I want to show you what kind of special worker I got going. I said, listen, what you got, man? And I began to have a conversation with him. I broke him down. You have to know how to be a person of peace. Amen. Now, here I'm working, going back to Napa, and the only African-American man on the job. And one day, one of the workers came to me. His name was Patrick. He says, uh, they call me Ambassador. Ambassador. He said, I'm going to share something with you. I said, what's up, Pat? He says, man, I was out with my friends hanging out. I said, yeah. He says, man, this other guy had some qualms with me, man. And he wanted to fight. Him. And so everybody was egging to fight on him. It was egging to fight on him. And I got to protect myself, so I'm like, I'm ready to fight. But I thought, everybody ain't going to fight on him. And now he's like coming up on me, and he's ready to fight. And I looked at him, and I thought, what would Ambassador do? It is in this situation. Listen to me, let me show you something. He said, I looked right at him, right in his eyes, and I said, grace and peace be unto you, and I walked away. I said, I grabbed him and I hugged him. I hugged him. I said, listen, my brother. I said, listen, we may not be the same ethnic background. I said, but you, my brother, I said, you've done the right thing. I said, you won the battle. What would you have benefited if you would have fought him? Either you could have been injured with that, he or both of y'all, and none of y'all was in the ring getting paid making money. If <laughs> <laughs> you were fighting, get in the ring make money. Yeah. Now, I have a brother-in-law, my brother, uh, wife's brother. He's about to say, I'm 49 now. Well, I'm just about to 48, but he said to me, man, you would have been proud of me, man. I said, what's 
said, what, what, what? He said, man, I got told this guy that me, I hit him, knocked him out cold. You would have proud of me. So I said, uh, 